it's John McCabe. Welcome to the show. Hey guys, and welcome to the John A. McCabe Show, where it's all about accelerating your authority in your business, your field of expertise, by helping entrepreneurs, business owners, authors, experts, speakers, get seen, get heard, get noticed on any device, anywhere, anytime in 100 days or less. Also known as the Authority Acceleration Formula. Now my guest today is someone I met back in 2009, 2010, when I first started in real estate investing. Uh, we met at actually a, networking, a real estate investing networking event. We were introduced by our mutual good friend, Richard Canfield. And uh, it was when, when I was just starting out in real estate investing, as I mentioned. Now, one of my guests had already been in the industry for close to a decade. However, it's not all been sunshines and rainbows for this particular investor. Now, during the recession of 2007, 2008, my guest had pretty much lost her entire $80 million worth of real estate and been on the verge of bankruptcy. Now, she was not alone during this time. There was many investors that learned a valuable lesson about leverage that they will carry with them for the rest of their life. But by getting creative and learning a variety of different strategies, she managed to keep the company going four years more than most people would have. Now pay attention to what she has to say because you can learn a lot from her. One thing I believe wholeheartedly, if you're gonna take advice or be coached by somebody, it better be somebody who has failed, lost, and rebuilt. That means they've learned a great, a great many lessons, a lot of valuable life lessons, and have something to teach you. I don't know about you, but losing close to $80 million in real estate is a big loss. And having the drive, determination, and ambition to get up, dust yourself off, and start again says a lot to ensure it doesn't happen again. Says a lot to a person's character, rather. Uh, and they are definitely someone that you really want to pay attention to. Now, you're definitely, you, you can definitely learn a lot from her. Now, because of her ups and downs and the lessons she's learned through the years, she's reaching out and helping others who want to actually get started in real estate investing or looking to actually get out of real estate investing by giving them hands-on support and guidance through her one-on-one -on -one coaching program. Now, there's a great deal of people who want to get into real estate who are just afraid to take that first step. They're looking for someone who will not only coach them, but also hold their hand and guide them through the entire process, help them avoid potential challenges. And if they do encounter something they don't know how to get past, they know that there's somebody there that they can reach out to and help them with those particular solutions or challenges. Now she does this by helping them build an investment strategy from where they are today to where they wanna be in the future. From that game plan, she works with them on achieving their goals and helps them with the paperwork, analyzing deals, sales, marketing, and even networking strategies. So stay with me because when I return, I'm gonna be joined by my guest for today, the street smart diva herself, Julie Hoffman. So just stay with me for one second. All right, I'm back. And uh, my guest today is a, the street smart diva herself, Julie Hoffman. Uh, Julie is an entrepreneur who focuses her efforts on real estate investing. Now, Julie, Julie's built an investment portfolio up to $80 million, only to lose most of it during the recession of 07, 08, but has dusted herself off, become very street smart when it comes to her investing strategy and knows what real estate investment landmines to avoid so the same thing doesn't happen to her again. Now, since then, she started coaching and has helped dozens of people on their real estate journey. She still invests and has rebuilt another multi-million dollar real estate portfolio, all without qualifying for financing and without any of her own money. She lives in sunny Kelowna, BC with her husband, Jeff, and five children, ages 8, 9, 10, 13, and 14. So please give it up with likes, love, shares, and a virtual flurry of thumbs up and hearts icons going across the screen for my guest today julie hoffman hey julie how you doing hey john i'm great thanks thanks for having me on hey no worries no worries so five kids all like preteen and teen that has to be insane it is a wild it's a wild experience but you know what it's great i really i i'm so i'm so uh, lucky i've got five great kids i really do 
Are your, are your kids involved in the uh, real estate business at all with you? Or do they help you out? Or are they just starting to help you out? They are not. I, not so much. My, my, I have a son. He designed a book cover for me. Okay. He really wants me to. I, I should have brought it. I should have had it ready here to show exactly. you. Exactly. <laughs> but no, you know, they're all on their own little paths. Like, and, oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, so you learned some valuable lessons back in uh, probably in the last five to ten years. Absolutely. So things yeah. were all great, all rosy until the recession hit, and then uh, uh, things became a little bit upside down. So why don't you start off with maybe giving us your you know two to four minute origin story? Tell us uh, sort of in two to four minutes Julie's life, um, you know, from where you were before to what happened to where you are today. For sure. And, you know, I hope I don't repeat myself too much today. But, you know, I, just, I, I started out like a lot of folks. Um, I, I grew up uh, with an, in a nice family. I listened to my parents. Well, actually, I didn't really. I was kind of a sneaky kid. Um, got away with a lot of things they, they still don't know, they, they don't know about. But, you know, I did what my parents told me to do. I got a good education so that I could go to university so I could get a good job. And I actually have two degrees, uh, one in exercise science and another one, a doctorate in physical therapy. And um, so there I was, uh, you know, getting educated in physical therapy. And I met this amazing Canadian man. And I, li I lived in the States at the time. I'm actually from Colorado. Okay. And uh, met this uh, really handsome Canadian guy down in Mexico. And he brought me up to Canada. We got married. And I started working as a physical therapist. And pretty soon thereafter, I was pregnant with my first child. And um, I, I always thought I'd go back to work because I'd gone to school forever. And you know, I was worried about my parent, what my parents would think, what other people would think. But once she was born, uh, everything changed. And also, right before she was born, my husband had come home and he said, we should invest in real estate. So we'd actually accumulated three properties. And I thought, okay, we have three properties. That's good. Uh, but I'm going back to work, honey. Yeah. But again, she was born and everything changed. So I knew I wanted to spend as much time with her as I possibly could. And I, I knew real estate would help me do that. So I bought 12 more properties in the next year. We accumulated 36 properties by 2006. We had a massive net worth because we bought them all, you know, between 2001, 2002, 2003. Yeah. Things just took off. We became condo converters. We converted five buildings really, really well and bought another, you know, yeah. let it ride. And it was just like it sounds. So we bought five more buildings, hoping to convert them, hoping to sell them. Like within a month, like we'd done with all of our other deals. And, you know, the economy had other plans. We bought five more buildings in pretty rough areas in Edmonton. You know Edmonton. So yes. we're talking not good. Th you know, thinking that, uh, again, we're just going to flip them. And our, our buyers dried up. We had to make plan B, plan C. We were on plan Z-5.6. <laughs> Uh, by the time, yeah, we ended up, you know, trying to trying to fight to save the business. Ended up, you know, having a partnership dispute, which was really unfortunate. Yeah. And yeah, ended up in multiple foreclosures and eventual bankruptcy. And I know it sounds horrible. It, it does. Even when I kind of repeat it in my head, I, I'm like, oh, geez, ah. But it was really a gift because there were so many times during those tough times that I wondered, why is this happening to me? Well, you know, like you said earlier, I just picked myself up, dusted myself off, started to, you know, just regroup things. And I had this opportunity actually to move out to Kelowna. And so my husband, myself, and my five kids, we loaded up our stuff, moved out to Kelowna. Kelowna is a great place to be, not Beautiful. only just yeah. awesome, but, you know, we needed a change of scenery. We'd been through a lot and got out here and I'd actually come out for a job. And the job went away within about two months. Wow. So 
we're like, well, it doesn't matter. We're here. Let's do everything that we can to stay here. My husband owned a business back in Alberta. So that worked. That was working pretty well. And I started, uh, so, so I, I started rebuilding another, like, like you said before, I, I rebuilt another multi-million dollar real estate portfolio. Yeah. And I just did things a lot differently. And then I, I came across a couple actually in Saskatchewan a couple years ago who needed my help. Um, and so a, a coaching, a coaching practice was born. I, I didn't really want to buy a property in Saskatchewan because I kind of like to be close to my deals or I like yeah. to have, you know, a good team of people on the ground. Cause I got some stuff in Alberta still. Exactly. And I'm looking into Alberta, but anyway, at the time they said, uh, can you help us? I said, well, I don't want to buy it, but I can coach you through the process. And I did. And they ended up, going from losing $10,000 to making an additional $22,000. And I'm like, oh, I like this. Yeah. So it's just become a combination of doing deals, coaching people. And so again, going back to, it, it's, it's kind of a tragic story, but it, had it not happened, you know, not, I, 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 I wouldn't be living in Kelowna. Um, probably, yeah. I'd probably still be in Alberta. Not that there's anything wrong with Alberta. I love Alberta. I do. Um, I'm pretty. I'm pretty happy where I'm at, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit warmer in the winter time. It's so, um, pretty nice. <laughs> so, did you just one quick question? Um, so, you bought uh, several properties in the early 2000s. So, obviously, when the market was going up, were you uh, refinancing and leveraging those those properties that you would bought earlier, and then using the equity to buy new stuff? Is that how you end up getting in trouble by over leveraging your properties? No, we had a net worth of probably five million. Sold all of the single-family homes, duplexes, condos, and bought multifamily to okay. do condo convert. Gotcha. Then that was profitable too. Again, like I said, for five for five buildings, and again, we'd buy them and they'd be sold off in a month. It was crazy. It was until, until you hit that heaven. point in time. Real estate it, utopia. Yeah. <laughs> Where the market actually started to go down and people started to, you know, you're left with buildings that, you know, you just, you have properties that you just can't unload because nobody's willing to buy them at uh, what you need to get out of them in order to save off, you know, losing a ton of money. Yeah, it was, it was pretty nightmarish. Yeah. Um, and we bought, we bought the five properties that we were going to flip, right? We bought them with an equivalent of a credit card. Oh, nice. So we weren't going to own them long, right? So one, actually one of the ways we were able to survive a lot longer is I was able to successfully individually refinance each individual condo. So it was 100 condos that I basically refinanced myself. So I learned so much about financing, which is a huge gift because you've got to know financing. If you don't know it, you're going to struggle in real estate. For sure. So, yeah. Julie, we're going to get into the show here. Um, I know you've watched the show a couple times already. So what I like to do, the first thing I like to do before we get too far right. is a speed round of questions. Right. So I know you've watched. So I know you're ready for this. It's not like you can study, though. It's just a series of questions to, so the uh, viewers can get to know you a little bit better. Okay. So, uh, so when you give your answers, just a couple words or a short sentence. Uh, like I said, it's nothing that you ever needed to study for. And for all you people watching at home, what I'd like you to do is uh, every time I ask a question, just type in your answer, whatever uh, your answer is, so we can compare what your answers are to what Julie's are. So please answer along. Uh, at the same time Julie enters her answers, uh, you can answer yours as well. So ready to get started? Yep, I'm ready. Okay, so name the book that impacted your life the most. I would say... Uh, the Art of the Deal okay. by Donald Trump. Now, when you were a young girl, who was your celebrity crush? That'd be Mark Wahlberg and still is. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, what is the book, podcast, or show that you're into right now? Grey's Anatomy on Netflix. Okay. Uh, do you currently work with any coaches? Yes, I do. I have a coach. His name is uh, Mark Januszewski. He's called the World's Na Laziest Networker. Okay. He's out of Kauai, Hawaii, and he's doing some great things. He's a, he's a brilliant man. Excellent. So what's your favorite movie of all time? It's Meet Me in St. Louis. Okay. <laughs> I was expecting a Mark Wahlberg movie. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> I love musicals. Are you currently involved in any masterminds? Yes, actually, it, it relates back to Mark, uh, Mark Januszewski. He has something called the Master Key Mastermind Alliance, yeah. and I'm part of that. I have been for the past, uh, going on three years. Excellent. So name a person, either dead or alive, who you'd most like to meet and have dinner with. I would like to meet Jerry Hicks. He is, uh, have you ever heard of Abraham Hicks? Yes. Yeah, I'd like to meet Jerry Hicks and have dinner with him and, and Esther. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, your favorite type of vacation, beach or adventure tour? Well, it's funny. I live where people vacation. <laughs> uh, it would be beach. So beach, boats, water. Beach, yeah. nice. Yeah. That's my favorite too. Yeah. Uh, best advice you, best business advice you ever received? Oh boy. It, this was from, this was from, uh, Arlen Dolan. Do you remember Arlen? No, I don't. His name Arlen. doesn't he, ring a bell. He was a big, uh, big real estate investment guy, real estate yeah. investment network guy. Um, a little bit, a little bit before your time, but uh, he said, "Well, yeah, if you're going to do condo conversion, now would be the time because there's the biggest price difference in right. um, what you can buy properties per door and what you can sell them for condos," and that changed my world. So I'm really glad he, he didn't actually necessarily say do it, but he said, if you're going to do it, now's the time. Now's the and time. I, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So the last question is a two parter, uh, beer or wine, pizza or wings. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't drink, but okay. when I did wine. Okay. And between pizza and wings, can I say yes? <laughs> to, well, yes to both. <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure. You can. Okay. Thanks. All right. So, Thanks a lot for playing along, Julie. Uh, yeah. Everyone give Julie some love by hitting the like button, the share, the love, uh, comment on the speed round. Uh, definitely share this video with uh, people in your network. Uh, share it on Facebook, on your, on your news feed, as well as any uh, pages that you manage. Uh, so we're just gonna give a quick shout out to people that are online that I can see who are online here. So just let me click in and I have Rochelle. The femme from really from Saskatchewan. Yeah, hi, Rachel. Sean, Sean Shuchuk from uh, Calgary's on, and I can't. I'm just used, looking at my phone, so I can't really see if there's anybody else on. But anyone that if I haven't, uh, I know April Hazel was on earlier. If nice. I didn't uh, say your name, uh, Rochelle says hi. I'm not sure if you can see the uh, feed on your new on your uh, Facebook or not, but Rochelle says hi. Tell her I said hi and say hi to Sean. I just saw Sean a couple weeks ago here in Kelowna. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. Well, you just said hi to them for the, for, <laughs> for me. So, so um, if you're just joining us, I'm speaking with the street smart diva herself, Julie Hoffman. Julie's an entrepreneur who focuses her efforts in real estate investing and helps others who want to get started in real estate uh, or looking to actually get out of real estate investing so they can avoid the landmines that she's gone through in her last 15 years of uh, investment career. So Julie, can you talk to me a little bit about how you actually got into real estate investment in the first place and uh, where you took your training from? Sure, absolutely. Um, and I, I will be repeating myself a little bit here, but that's okay. You don't mind, right? No, I don't mind. <laughs> it was, I was 18 months. No, I was not 18 months pregnant. That's not possible. Um, I, I was, I'd been married for about 18 months, pregnant with my first child. And my husband called me from the road one night and said, Julie, we need to start investing in real estate. He had just came from a real estate investment network meeting, so a RAIN meeting. Oh, okay. And that's where he learned that 95% of all millionaires have done so through real estate, and he couldn't wait to get started. So he was, um, he was really busy, though. He, had, he owned a home hardware at the time, and he worked 80 hours a week. And I was a physio, so I had a lot more flexibility. So I could make phone calls in, you know, in the evening, on weekends, at my lunch breaks, and I could go see properties a lot more easily. So I actually did most of the laid work when it came to buying the properties. And um, we, we, pulled a line of, we uh, put a line of credit on our house. So we got like a um, $70,000 line of credit. We matched it up with a buddy of ours from Grand Prairie. His name was Jim. Okay. And we pulled our money and we bought, uh, we bought three properties at first. And then, like I said before, when I had my daughter, I just, I knew I couldn't go back 
to physio if I could help it. So we kept buying more and more properties. And that's basically, it's basically how we started. I also take in uh, Ron Legrand courses, uh, but most of my training has come from the Real Estate Investment Network. And I've also done a lot of networking with Darren Weeks in the Fast Track Group. So did you actually uh, attend any courses with Rain or you just went to the monthly sessions? I went to the courses, or I, I went to the monthly sessions, but I also went to, like I said, um, Ron Legrand. I went to two yeah. Ron Legrand uh, quick turn real estate boot camps. Right. And um, they had like a condo conversion course. I can't remember all the courses, but most, mostly the monthly meetings is what, okay. what so I attended. What was, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your main strategy when you first started into real estate? Uh, I know that you transitioned into condo conversion and then what is your main strategy right now? So can you talk about the three different sort of uh, time frames and what your strategy was for each time frame? Yes, absolutely. So my first strategy, we, we bought assumable mortgages, which actually is not really all that possible anymore. Right. But it was basically a way to invest in real estate with low money down and without having to qualify for financing. Now, there are still ways to do that today. It's just a little bit, there's just like an extra step involved. And most of the time for assumables now, you actually have to get qualified. They still want you to qualify and they want you to put 5% down. A lot of the, the class A banks want you to qualify and they want you to put at least 5% down on assumable mortgages. They just make their own rules up. They did well, and you know, it's the golden rule, right? Yeah, who owns the gold makes the rules. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah, so um, they were primarily buy and holds. So, we would just buy them and rent them. So, we were primarily landlords, and we had a portfolio of 36 properties ranging from duplexes, fourplexes, uh, townhomes, Grand Prairie, Edson, and Edmonton. Most of them were in Edmonton. Okay. So, that was our first strategy. And then, yes, we went into condo conversion, just kind of, uh, I, I decided I, want to, I wanted to buy multifamily. So, uh, I actually, this realtor, her name's Pam Gill, she, she's, she reached out to me because I joined her list and I called her a bunch of times and I said, I'd like to buy a multifamily. So, she kind of didn't take me seriously, actually, <laughs> because she didn't, she, didn't, uh, she didn't know much about me. Yeah. And she called me about a 15 unit apartment building and she said, well, I've got this building, but it's only 15 units. And I said, well, I okay. So <laughs> I didn't know the difference. And uh, she said, okay, that doesn't bother you. I said, no, I, I just want to get in. I don't, I don't really care. She said, okay, great. Well, this is the other thing. Now it's, you can't qualify for financing. And I'm like, okay, I'm waiting for the downside. She said, do you understand? she said, you have to buy this property through what's called an agreement for sale. And she kind of held her breath. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. She said, well, you know what that is? I said, yeah, I've, been, I've bought that. I've done that a few times with some of the houses that I already own. She's like, you own houses? I said, yeah, I own about 39 single family <laughs> homes. I've been buying them since 2001. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, oh, so anyway, she helped me get my first building. I didn't qualify for financing. I didn't put it, put down any of my own money. And then she showed me a condo conversion. So I'd buy the building with her and then I'd sell all the condos off with her brother, actually, Camille, a uh, Cam. Yeah. Cam, Cam, Gil, great condo guy in, in Edmonton. And so that was, yeah, that was our, that was our second strategy. And then we got spit up and chewed out. Nope. We got chewed up and spit out. That's, yeah. how, it, that's how you put it. And, um, when I was going to, uh, you know, I was looking at rebuilding, I would read a book by Mark Loeffler called yep. Investing in Rent to Own. Mm -hmm. And I love his tenant first strategy. So that's what I wanted to primarily do. <laughs> my husband's outside showing, holding up my dog. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> I put my dog in the closet so she wouldn't bark. Oh, nice. I love my dog. But anyway, so, so. I really like Mark's, I just thought his tenant first strategy was absolutely brilliant. So I knew if I was going to rebuild real estate, that's how I wanted to do it. So I've done a few of those. Mm -hmm. And I also am just finding all kinds of deals with motivated sellers. 
So I'm, I'm pretty good at sandwich leaf lease options and those kinds of those kinds of opportunities. And that's what I'm primarily focusing on. Um, I've bought a few just with investors where the investors have qualified for financing and they just want to, you know, um, sit on a property. But most of them, my, my favorite way is tenant first with investors. Right. Yeah. Especially if you're, if the tenants have, you know, typically with the tenant first strategy, you were looking for them to have a specific, a minimum amount of, of down payment. A lot of times, most tenant first strategies, you want at least 5% down so that, so that actually, you know, there's incentive for an investor to come in and actually purchase a property. So uh, yet yeah, in one's investing career, a lot of times you don't end up sticking with the same strategy or you need to have a, a lot of different strategies in your, in your tool belt so that you can see an opportunity and then evaluate and determine which strategy works best because you're getting a lot of opportunities uh, opportunities come on but come in but you know they might all not always if you're only looking or only know of one strategy you can miss out on a lot of different opportunities because you don't know how to analyze it and sort of fit it figure out which strategy works best yes because really it's about return on investment and it's wherever you're going to get the fastest return on an investment and get your freedom. That's sort of what you need to how you need to analyze properties. So making sure that, uh, you know, a, a variety of different strategies. I meet a lot of investors and they'll they only know one strategy where they'll just focus on buy, rent and hold. And, you know, maybe they'll do it with some partners or, or find some investors. But that buy, rent and hold strategy, if you're needing to raise the 20 to 30% down payment, it's a long, long process versus if you actually have other uh, strategies such as the lease option, sandwich lease option or other short term strategies, fix and flips uh, yeah. using private money that you can actually use to generate the income to do the buy, rent and hold. And that's always been sort of my strat my philosophy is I understand all of the strategies and I yeah. will do whatever works best in that particular situation and then use the money from that to do the buy, rent and hold. And I, I agree with all that. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. having so having sort of a clear understanding of all the different strategies is very useful, and especially if you're going to deal with a coach, you want your coach to know to be able to look at an opportunity and understand the, the variety of different strategies that are available to to you and mm -hmm. help you make the decision as to what is the best what's going to get you your best ROI. It's still up to the individual to make the decision, but you can help them guide them through the strategy and the analysis of if you do this, here's your ROI. If you do that, here's your ROI. If you do this strategy, here's your ROI. So making sure that they're making the right informed decision that's going to work out best for them. Absolutely. So if you're yes. just joining us, I'm speaking with the street smart diva herself, Julie Hoffman. Julie's an entrepreneur who focuses her efforts on real estate investing and helps others who want to get started in real estate investing and or are looking to get out of real estate investing so they can avoid the landmines that she's gone through through her 15 year investment career. So um, just please feel free to give us some likes, some love, uh, share this on your wall, uh, share it on the pages that you manage. Um, you know, anyone that you think might have uh, see some good value out of today's session. Uh, Julie, so the next question is, uh, so how are you doing things differently this time around for your own personal investing strategy? I think you just touched on that. So uh, the biggest changes I see, now you can correct me, but I'm just gonna, from what you've talked about, the biggest things that I see right now is you're not actually using any of your own money. You're trying to do the strategies where uh, even the investor first strategy you some typically I think you're using somebody else's money if you're doing sandwich lease options you know that's that's been my bread and butter strategy since day one I've um, done just tremendous amount of uh, sandwich lease options yeah uh, you know my first two years I did 24 sandwich lease options uh, one a month for 24 months straight never using never needing any cash credit or joint venture partners so yeah. uh, are you so I, I, I realize that you're focusing on the no money down strategies, uh, but is there any other big changes? Uh, are you still doing the investing in some buy, rent and holds? Tell us a little bit about what's yes, going on there. Yes, I still have some buy, rent and holds. In fact, I'm looking actually at about six in um, in Saskatchewan, in okay. Regina. 
Yeah, because I think uh, I think there's some. I think uh, I think people. I think there's money there. I think I'm, I could smell it from Kelowna. Um, <laughs> it's yeah, absolutely. What I like is making sure that my investors are very secure. So yeah. always making sure that they're on title, and yeah. you know, making sure that if you know if anything should happen to me, that my investors are 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 left with something, you know, substantial, something ta tangible, right. because, you know, just through the, through the downturn, unfortunately, you know, I lost millions and, and we had some investors that lost some money as well. And it really was, it was just so difficult. It's even hard. It's hard to admit, but you know what, it, it does happen. Yeah. And that's why I always like to emphasize, make sure you're in a secure position because it just makes it less risky. And I take, I take my time a lot more than I did. And I'll, I, I'll wait for a better deal. I don't have a problem with that because there's always another bus. Yes. Uh, the, la the deal in front of you is not the only deal you're gonna get. It may seem like the best deal with the best kitchen and oh my gosh, it has a basement suite. But you know what, if it's not coming together, there's a reason and it just means there's another bus. Yeah, so my philosophy is there's a, the deal of the century comes around every, every week, <laughs> every month. Yeah. So just wait another week or a month and you'll get another deal of the century. Because if you're putting yourself out there, if you're active, if you're, uh, you know, being um, consistent on a persistent basis with your marketing, with your strategies, then you're attracting a lot of leads and opportunities. And those opportunities will come, come around on a regular basis. They, you get to pick and choose. They come around. The more you do it, the more you get out there, the more you talk to people. I had five calls, five calls at least in the last week on people that need help. Right. Yeah. And there's a lot of those people in Alberta right now. Yeah. And getting... Saskatchewan. Yep. And Saskatchewan. But there's even deal. There's deals around here. I'm in a hot market. Oh, yeah. I'm in a hot market. But there's still deals. Yeah, because people don't. They typically only know. You know, they get in a distressed situation and they don't. They're embarrassed. They don't want to sort of it's hard for them to reach out for help. So they'll do it privately by just calling somebody yeah. um, and just having a conversation that way and, and sort of telling their story as to uh, what, what happened to them and uh, you know, how they need, how they need to get out of their situation. That, that happens a lot, especially yeah. if the people there, cause there was a lot of people that were working in the oil up in Fort McMurray that had relocated to the Cologne area for the fly in fly out. Mm -hmm. And then they lose their jobs and now they're, you know, they have no job, they have no income and they have still have properties in that area. Yes. It's like that all over Canada. So it doesn't really matter where, uh, what, what part of this country you live in. There's people in distress situations. Yep. So Julie, one of the biggest myths or misconceptions people have when it comes to real estate investing is they actually need to have money to get into the game. So can you give the viewers three ways that they can get started in real estate today for free? Yes, absolutely. And it all goes back to, for me is whenever you get, whenever you're new at something, the more you practice it, the better at it you're going to get, the better at it you get, the more confident you're going to feel. So the first thing that people can do absolutely for free is just start talking about real estate. Yeah. Go to my website, look at things, go online, look at real estate investment training videos and start talking to people about how instead of saying, you know, somebody says, Hey, how you doing? Instead of saying great, fine or busy, then start, start, start saying words like great. I'm just starting my real estate investment journey and I've already learned a, a ton so far this week yeah. or how you doing? Well, Life is good. I was just on a webinar with this amazing woman and this really smart guy. And they just, you know, they started talking about real estate. And I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to get going doing it. The more you talk about it, the more you're interested in it, the more people know that this is something that you are, you know, doing, then you're going to be the go-to person should anything, should circumstances change in their world or maybe somebody that they know's world. Right. Because all things change with time and circumstances. Somebody dies, somebody gives birth, somebody gets divorced, somebody moves, somebody loses their job, somebody gets a job in another province. The more you talk about real estate, 
and it's absolutely free, the more you're going to be the go-to person. And guess what? Maybe the first person you bring real estate up to uh, might have a situation. And you might say to yourself, oh, I'm not ready. I don't know what to do. Well, I, I bet you, I bet you five bucks that John would take your phone call and walk you through it. I know I would take your phone call and walk you through it. And, and who knows, there's this, there could be some money to be made, right? Yeah. So, so that's absolutely free. The second way is start looking at property. You can look at a hundred, you can look at an infinite amount of properties every day and get to know them, get to know what they look like, get to know how many square feet a property has, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms. Um, the neighborhoods, maybe become a specialist in your neighborhood or some kind of an, uh, or some area of, of a particular city. You can literally, seriously, look at properties all day long. And you have to keep in mind, when I started looking at properties, it, this is 2001, there was no internet. No. No. So I had to like call people on the phone. I had to go to the town, buy a freaking newspaper call people, maybe they'd call me back, maybe they wouldn't, I'd ask, to ask them all these questions. If it sounded like something good, I had to drive an hour and a half, or an hour to Edmonton usually, because that's where we're looking. Yeah. And it's not that way anymore, it's absolutely free. And the yeah. more you look at properties, the better you're gonna be. And again, that gives you confidence. You can virtually be an expert in real estate in a certain area, and it's absolutely free to do that. And the third way is by analyzing the numbers. And you, you research an area, see how much properties are renting for, see how much they are in value. I mentioned before, I've, I've refinanced 100 doors on my own. I understand mortgages and amortizations and terms and, mm -hmm. and how the numbers work. Get used to analyzing deals because the more deals you look at, the more likely you're actually, you may find, you know, in your digging, you may find a, a really amazing opportunity. Yeah. And Again, the, the better you understand the numbers, the more prepared you're going to be. And all three of those, all three of those things can totally help you just get started. And it's not going to cost you a dime. Excellent. Yeah. yeah so when um, when I got started uh, in 2009, uh, I think there were only two, maybe three people, three investors using Kijiji at that point in time. So I was one of the I was the first one to. Um, use it on a consistent, persistent basis. And yeah. I was, it was before they implemented any rules. I had <laughs> 20, 25 ads running on Kijiji <laughs> at any given time. And uh, yeah, I was just dominating like two to three pages worth of Kijiji. Not only that, but I had uh, my, uh, my web stuff as well. My internet, yeah. uh, my websites, uh, because I understand the, the, the internet search engine optimization. So yeah, back, uh, fortunately, I, I had learned uh, from a previous business, uh, both internet and uh, websites and, and attracting people. But yeah, I can remember there was only a couple people at that point in time in 2009 when I started that were that was using Kijiji as for doing ads. It's like, wow. Yeah. There's not so much anymore. Wow. Now it, it uh, you know, we um, bend any rules with Kijiji. They slap your hands and they ban <laughs> you for a while and it's... Uh, it's uh, so those three tools, Julie. Do you uh, you have those? You use those for your private clients, or do you have some something that you could actually maybe give to our guests today? Um, yeah, I, I I could I could totally do that. Okay. I could I'd be happy to do that. Absolutely. Um, so maybe it, what we'll do is uh, at the end of the show, you can just drop a link in the uh, comment section. So if anyone that wants to check it out. Um, or get more information about that stuff, then they, they just click on the link and uh, take them to your website where they can get that stuff for free. How's that? Absolutely. I, that'd be my pleasure. That'd be okay. awesome. Yeah. Excellent. So if you're just joining us, I'm speaking with uh, the street smart diva herself, Julie Hoffman. Julie's an entrepreneur who focuses her efforts in real estate investing and helps others who want to get started in real estate investing or, or maybe they're transitioning out of real estate investing. Uh, basically, she helps them avoid the landmines that she's gone through in her 15 year investment career. So if you have any questions for Julie, just type them in the comment field. We'll definitely try to answer them before the end of the show. And if we can't, we'll answer them on the, in the Facebook comments um, a little bit uh, after the show is done. So definitely uh, give Julie some love by hitting the like button, the love button, share it, uh, leave some comments. Uh, 
So Julie, I think another one of the biggest myths or misconceptions about real estate investing business is that it's a part-time venture, that you can make money without doing much work. I know that's, that, that's what all the seminar companies promote when they come through town. They sell the financial dream without much effort. What are your thoughts on this? I, the part-time thing, I can somewhat agree with. I, you, you, I mean, unless you're renovating, you're probably not spending 40 hours a week at, at a property. You know, you really, you really aren't. It's the other stuff. It's the networking and it's the getting out there and finding something. You know, I call it digging, you're digging right. for gold. It, it, it takes time, it takes effort. And if you think it's gonna just land in your lap, then you're fooling yourself. Um, yeah. Because you've really got, you've really got to be out there. And no, I. Um, <laughs> it's so funny when you see stuff like that out there. Oh, no selling, no this, no that. Well, how are you going to get anything done? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there is the ability to do it. I mean, it's not like you ha you have to spend like forty hours a week, as you said. But it's something that you have to do on a consistent, persistent basis. Mm -hmm. So every day you have to put in the time, the energy, and follow through with a strategy that's going to help to generate those leads or opportunities. If you're yeah. just doing something on a Monday and then you don't do anything again until maybe the next Saturday and then two weeks later you decide to do something for eight hours, I mean, you're never going to get any traction that way. If you're going to do this, even if you're going to do this part time, part time to me means that you're going to put in two to three hours a day consistently, maybe six days a week on a consistent, persistent basis. You're going to do things. You're going to analyze. You're going to look at for properties. You're going to analyze deals. You're going to call or talk to homeowners. You're going to do, go to networking meetings. You're going to do what you need to do to get yourself out there and to attract those leads or opportunities or follow up with the ones that are coming in. So do I believe that you can do it on a part time basis? If, if part time is less than 40, 50 hours a week, then yes, I'll agree part time. But part time is not uh, a couple hours this week and then maybe an hour next week and three hours a week after. It's part time is on a consistent, persistent basis, a couple few hours every single day, six days a week. And if you can keep that up, you'll actually build momentum. The other way, you actually don't have any momentum. So are you are you really a real estate investor or are you not a real estate investor? Because you know you want to give the impression to people that you're a real estate investor. But if they only see you once every three months, they never see you at networking events. You know, you're never really talking to the realtors or the mortgage brokers. You're not putting yourself out there. Then, you know, a lot of people aren't going to take you seriously, mm -hmm. even if you are doing it part time. So for me, I just laugh when I see that because, yeah, basically they're they're all these seminar companies are preying on people's uh, dreams that to get rich without actually working. And that's such a that's so not true in this business. Mm -hmm. You can make a lot of money, but you still have to do some work. I mean, it's not physical work, but you still need to do work. I, I, exactly. I, I, I couldn't agree more. It's like, um, you know, you can't eat 10 apples in one day and expect to get healthy, yeah. right? Yeah. So how are you finding a lot of your um, leads or opportunities right now, Julie? I get a lot of leads from actually Facebook and honestly, it's from just now, it, it's, it's from networking a lot. All the networking that I've done since 2001. Yes. And having a website, having a good, strong web presence. I do a lot of webinars. Um, I, uh, I, have, I, I like to affiliate with people. I like to affiliate with people like you, John. Um, I've, I've um, been fortunate to hook up with, with a guy named Bill Biko. He's called the Educated Landlord down in Calgary. He's totally helping me do a ton of online stuff. And I'm also on um, the Kelowna Women in Business Executive. Yeah. And so I, you know, it just strengthens your credibility when you're actually in an executive position, which is a volunteer position in a networking uh, group. So I, I'm, doing all, I'm doing all kinds of things. I'm definitely trying to grow my, 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 web, my online stuff. Yeah. Um, 90 years probably about three or four years ago was 97 percent of the people started their search online i'm sh quite sure that's close to closer to 99.9 percent .9 of the people start their search online yeah so you need to position yourself you you definitely need to have an online presence you need to position yourself 
so that you're going to be where the people are actually looking for a solution to their problem. So understanding, you know, people's pains, fears, frustrations, ambitions, being able to actually create copy uh, or creating ads that are going to get people to actually take action is hugely important nowadays and having that presence, understanding uh, a little bit about search engines and understanding a little bit about what, um, you know, this different social platforms, how to use them, how to, you know, incorporate them in your business is, I mean, it's a never ending <laughs> battle trying to learn all this stuff in order to stay at the top of your game because if you don't learn it, somebody else will. And mm -hmm. it's like a, uh, the analogy that I like to use is it's like a store shelf, the best before date. So if you're not constantly staying present, um, you know, your best before date gets pushed back and pushed back and the, the, those who are staying present get pushed to the front and yours will eventually fall off the shelf or get thrown in back and nobody will um, be able to find you more or less. Yep. So having that key presence and understanding how to write ads is, uh, I, and understanding how to write effective copy. I mean, mm -hmm. I've been studying that for the last five years. I'm still studying it today. I, you know, I, I work with some of the, the, the top uh, copywriters in North America, some of the top uh, internet marketers, and I learn from them. I, you know, they're my coaches. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but the online presence, doing video, doing stuff like this uh, is crucial to, you know, staying in the forefront. So, well, uh, John, I've been, yeah, and I've been following you for years and I, your stuff that I read, it just gets better and better. Thanks. I let you, you're, you really have a gift in writing in writing your copy and, um, it's getting you better. You practiced it and honed your skill. <laughs> it's getting better. I mean, I'm still not, uh, that I'm still not the greatest at it. Obviously, uh, <laughs> my name's not Frank Kern by any means, but, uh, I study from these guys and, uh, just makes it better. So, um, Actually, I have uh, anyone that's interested. I have a, a free um, PDF for helping real estate investors create ads. Actually, awesome. maybe, I'll throw, yeah. maybe I'll throw that in as well. Uh, so after the show, I'll put in the link where people can actually get the free PDF. It's um, writing killer ad copy for motivated homeowners. So mm -hmm. basically, I use this strategy for writing the ads for to attract all my homeowners mm -hmm. that want to actually uh, do business with me. And I, when I promote my ads right now, we have uh, people across the country uh, for our nationwide business that actually are running my ads in about 19, 20 different cities right now, uh, generating us, you know, hundreds of leads per city mm -hmm. on any given month based on the strategy that I used in creating my ads. So I'm going to, as a free giveaway, uh, I'll put the link in after the show. Anyone that wants the free giveaway, uh, free PDF on how to, you know, write killer ad copy for their ads, they're more than welcome to have it. So nice. That's awesome. I'm going to get a copy. Is it okay if I give it to my coaching clients? For sure. It's free. Thanks. Uh, actually, Thanks, just um, send them the link so they can download it. So that's I what I'll do. I, so I can capture their email. And yes, exactly. <laughs> you know how that works, right? I do. I do. Excellent. Help out of the game. Um, let's see. So, just in closing, Julia, do you have any um, final uh, uh, closing thoughts for our guests or people looking to get in real estate investing that you want to share with them? Any words of wisdom and uh, from your 15 years of experience? <laughs> Well, you know, I, I, it goes back to this all the time. You can read as many books as you want. You can play the cash flow game all you want, and Monopoly, and go to all the seminars and attend all the webinars that you want. But the only way to really learn how to do real estate is by actually doing it. Yeah. And that's probably the best advice I could give. And if you don't have a mentor, then reach out to, I mean, R Rochelle Laflamme, she's on right now. She's, um, she's amazing. They are the, uh, what are they called? Oh, Epic, Rochelle, I'm sorry. Epic, uh, Epic Alliance Epic ladies. Alliance, They're yes. fantastic. Reach out to John, Sean Chuchuk. I know he loves, he knows a ton about real estate. Um, find a mentor or a coach, find, you know, find somebody. I'm not trying to plug myself, but the reason why I started doing it is I just found so many people really, really interested, but yeah. scared. 
take that next step. And it is hard to do anything that's unfamiliar by yourself. So, uh, but you got to do it. You, you, you got to, you got to take that step. Yeah, one thing I would say about the coaching program, well, there are two things I'd say about the coaching programs. One, if you're going to um, work with a coach, make sure that it's somebody that has seen some failures. Because if the coach that you're working with has never failed at anything uh, with respect to the real estate, if they've never lost any money, if they've never failed at a deal, then chances are they haven't done enough deals or they haven't learned sort of uh, had the struggles that can help you sort of overcome those challenges because all of the the best my real estate coach um, He's the one that built what is now known as a rich dad education company in Canada Ross Lytle This guy's got 30 some years of experience He's the one that actually wrote all the manuals for that company. It was uh, wealth intelligence with back then It was with uh, Russ Whitney then Kiyosaki came in and he ran that company for 14 years he has analyzed more deals. He's coached, uh, he's done over 800 coaching sessions, coached over a thousand, well over a thousand people, trained well over 10,000 people in North America. And, you know, he is my coach today. So, and he has lost and gained millions a couple of times. <laughs> so, you know, there's people that if the, the, your coaches haven't had the struggles, there's good chance that uh, they haven't learned enough. You know, if they've only been in the business for a year or two years, if they haven't had the pitfalls, you know, you may want to question sort of that. But someone with Julie's experience, 15 years in the business, lost almost $80 million, I mean, and then rebuilt it back up. There's, there's something to be learned there. And she's learned some valuable lessons. I mean, I've, I've lost, I've entered into partnerships and that have not worked out well twice where I've not, I've, you know, basically lost all the deals I've done for years. Basically no income from the deals I've done for the last two to three years. So, uh, so you end up in situations and then, but you just dust yourself off, you get back up. So there's that. And as well, if you're thinking about real estate investing, I would advise you to actually seek out and work with a coach before you invest the 10, 20, $30,000 into the courses into the people that are coming around selling their courses because one there's a good chance you don't need that 10 20 30 thousand dollars worth of courses and it's basically it's a seminar business it's not an education business so they're out there just to sell seminars they're out there to sell their stuff but you don't even know if you want to do real estate so why invest 30 40 thousand dollars into it and you don't even know if you want to do it mm -hmm. hire work with a coach spend the time with a coach to get started to determine if this is for you or not because in a lot of cases you may not even want to do real estate investing you think you do but once you learn that you know what it's really about there's people that I've worked with and that have worked with me for a month and they were so thankful that they worked with me before they actually went out and invested in any courses because they realize because I actually make them do real estate investing on a regular on a daily basis two to three hours a day they're doing it they're actually out there doing it and uh, they're so thankful because it's like this is not for me yeah if that's what I have to do to do this business on a regular basis without any money of course they're all want to do the no money down strategies then I don't really um, thank you I don't want to invest you know I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to spend the money to take all these courses and knowing that I wouldn't want to do it anyway so you know thanks for helping me understand that this is not for me yeah exactly all right so uh, I want to thank you Julie very much for being on being a guest on today's show uh, if you guys have any questions for Julie there's just a there's a couple comments here I'm gonna to try to read them um, my, my good friend Mike Lapeer down in Nova Scotia says hey John Kevin Cochran is here and has a question and his question is is your drop ball still better than your rise ball? <laughs> so I grew up with Mike and Kevin Cocker and Kevin uh, and I played on the same ball team and he was the catcher and I was a pitcher and uh, Mike, neither one of those work anymore. <laughs> I can't throw either one of those. Uh, Rochelle says, thanks for the shout out. Uh, Epic Alliance Real Estate is, Epic Alliance Real Estate Incorporated is the name of their business. So that's uh, Rochelle in Saskatchewan. They're awesome. Yeah. Um, 
So Julie, thank you very much. If you guys have any questions, I know uh, you can just type them in. Julie will answer them, um, you know, in, in the Facebook comments. Yep. Uh, thank you very much for being on the show. Uh, everyone show Julie some love by hitting the like, love button. Um, and with that, Julie, I'm just going to uh, transition out here and uh, thank you again very much. And uh, I'll be right back with uh, closing remarks. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on. All right, so uh, I hope you enjoyed today's show with our guest, uh, Julie Hoffman, the street smart diva. She's, such, she's uh, such a smart, determined, and driven, and really a giving entrepreneur and investor, someone who has had definitely had their challenges. She got knocked down, but she got right back up. She dusted herself off and has rebuilt herself up from nothing again. Now, as an entrepreneur and investor, those are the types of qualities that you're looking for in a coach or mentor. Someone who's been to the top of the mountain, been knocked down, found their way and found their way back up. So when you're looking for a coach mentor, you definitely want to look for someone uh, like Julie or even myself so that you can learn from all the mistakes that we've made and you can compress your learning curve and the time it takes you to reach your goals. Now, working with a coach or mentor is so important if you're if you want to be successful in business, real estate investing or basically any endeavor that you want to get into. But there's always been one piece of advice I've learned from one of my current coaches, Ed Rush, down in San Diego. And that is you can't cheap your way to success. Working with a coach is an investment. And typically, the better the coach, the higher the investment. Now, you're investing in not only what they can teach you, but what you're going to save, but what they're going to save you with respect to money and stress and time. Because the most valuable, the most valuable commodity to anyone is time. So before you rush out there and invest 10, 20, $40,000 into a huge training package, invest the time with a coach first to determine if real estate investing is the path for you first. Now, if you've already invested with seminar companies, then the best thing you can do to ensure your success is to hire a coach that will work with you to get you that first deal from start to finish. Sometimes it may be as simple as implementing a marketing system to help you find the leads or opportunities so that you can turn around and make uh, take the action or make something happen. For, for more information on coaching programs, marketing systems, courses, and more, just check out the link that I'll post uh, in the comments. Uh, you can get, and maybe you can get started on your path to success today. So with that, I wanna thank you for joining me on today's show, and I hope you'll join me on tomorrow's show where we're gonna have another great guest lined up and an hour of entertaining education for the entrepreneur, business owner, real estate investor, author, expert, or speaker. Uh, so tomorrow, so for tomorrow, until tomorrow, this is John A. McCabe wishing you an amazing day, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Take care.